It started like a regular cold for Mr. Lee in the spring of 2003, but soon he was experiencing severe pain. Tend to have some pain to yap chum. Tana, or Junga Kagana, I why you see come you go ban, gin tap y sung, I want my attire. He spent two months in that coma. And with an influx of patients experiencing similar symptoms, scientists at Hong Kong's universities worked round the clock to identify what was causing it and how to treat it. The difficulty is you don't know what you're treating at that time. <laughs> All right, the patient having fever and the pneumonia, and we haven't found, a, found anything at that time. So everybody is very anxious, uh, trying to find what is going on wrong with the, with the, with the patients. The disease was eventually called SARS, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, a virus that first spread in densely populated animal markets in southern China. In the spring of 2003, it was brought to Hong Kong by a visiting doctor, and within weeks, it spread throughout the city. The Amoy Gardens private housing estate in Kowloon was one of the black spots for disease transmission. In total, over 1,700 people in Hong Kong were infected, and nearly 300 people died. Many of the survivors still suffer from SARS long-term effects. Mr. Lee hasn't been able to work since he got ill. In the years after SARS, the Hong Kong government has taken extensive measures to promote public hygiene, hoping to avert the next pandemic. But Professor Yun says it's only a matter of time. SARS is horrible because it's acute and also the mortality is around 10 percent. It will come back if you open up all the wildlife markets in China again. And you can see that things always repeat itself. If it comes um, many years later, people would, all the vigilance will be gone and the effect is much bigger. Uh, all the measures that we are now taken would be uh, so downgraded that uh, when it comes, we would not be able to handle it because of the loss of vigilance. But if it comes earlier, then it's usually easier because now we at least uh, in the public health sector, we are still very concerned about emerging infectious diseases.